Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be holy. God's fire. So there are five, five things that the Bible expects one generation to transfer to the other, in order for that generation to say they have given an inheritance. Five. Very quickly, we'll get to the business of the night. Number one. The first thing that qualifies to be called an inheritance that every father must transfer to his children, every leader must transfer to their subordinates, no matter what else you give people, if you do not give them these, you did not transfer an inheritance. Are you ready? Number one, your convictions. The first thing that qualifies to be called an inheritance is your convictions or are your convictions. Your convictions are a summation of your philosophies, your beliefs, your mindset so that if you want to bless the next generation more than just giving them physical things, the first thing you need to give the next generation are your convictions everybody say convictions the summation of your philosophies your beliefs your mindset genesis chapter 18 please we'll read verse 17 to 19 genesis chapter 18 hallelujah please look up this was um a discussion between the lord and abraham as touching Sodom and Gomorrah and the Lord said shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do why verse 18 seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him please read verse 19 together let's read verse 19 together are you ready one to read for i know him that he will command his children and his household after him that they shall keep the way of the lord to do justice and judgment that the lord may bring upon abraham that which he had spoken of him so the lord is saying there's no need abraham has become my friend among many reasons that he always thinks succession i know that anything i tell abraham will be preserved because he will transfer it even to the generations coming the first gift and the first blessing that any elder male or female any leader any man of god the moment you want continuity you want succession for your life the first thing that you have to give is your convictions if you cannot transfer your convictions to your subordinates to your son spiritually and physically then you have not given them an inheritance are we together by the way let me back up a bit and um define for you let's talk forgive me let me just take a minute or two and put everyone in perspective let's define an inheritance we're still on course i just thought to take a break and then define an inheritance and then we'll continue what does it mean to inherit to inherit means to receive by succession or by will it's a legal statement to inherit means to receive by succession or to receive by will as an heir an heir there means a legally entitled person to inherit means to receive by succession or to receive by will as an heir so when we talk about someone inheriting something it means that you receive by succession or you receive by the will 
as an heir an heir there means you are legally entitled to it now let's define inheritance what is an inheritance an inheritance i wrote here is an acquisition of a possession could be property could be a condition or could be a trait an acquisition of a possession could be a property could be a condition could be a trait from past generations especially from parents to offsprings i'll take it again an inheritance is an acquisition of a possession be it property be it a condition or be it a trait from past generations especially from parents to offsprings so when we talk about inheritance we mean acquiring like we did say either by succession or through the will as an heir i believe you have that now so let's go to our discussion that there are five things that must be transferred from past generations to the next generation to make for succession and to qualify that you have laid up an inheritance for your children number one are your convictions deuteronomy chapter 6 will read for sake of time 1 2 7 20 and 21 1 2 7 20 and 21 i'll read and you listen now these are the commandments the statutes and the judgments which the lord your god commanded to teach you listen carefully that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it verse 2 that thou mightest fear the lord thy god to keep his statutes and his commandments which i command thee thou and thy son and thy son's son all the days of thy life that thy days may be prolonged are we together now jump please to verse 7 verse 7 it says and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thy house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up verse 20 and when thy son asketh thee in the time to come saying what meaneth the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the lord hath commanded you 21 it says then thou shalt say unto thy son we were pharaoh's born men in egypt and the lord brought us out by a mighty hand and then you read and read and it continues now the point is this that he's admonishing them that listen everything you are learning by reason of your experience that is building your conviction make sure you are close enough to your children that you do not leave without teaching them practice them in front of your children and let them ask you questions why do you believe this why do you know this there are many wealthy people many anointed people many great people who never reproduce themselves do you know why because they are unable to transfer their convictions the first thing to transfer to your children or to the generation coming are your convictions not material things is someone learning convictions now aside from the bible second only to the bible i have been thoroughly blessed and transformed by the industry we call the personal development industry hallelujah where we have men and women who have been able to shape our philosophies and our approach to life um one of the stories that comes very readily to mind was the story of a wealthy man arguably the first billionaire recorded in the united states when they became a nation by the name andrew carnegie listen very carefully andrew carnegie was a very successful man history would tell us 
and then one time it was said that he felt very disappointed that many of the wealthy people within his class and the blessed people and the great people they were going to their graves and were never transferring the truths that made them wealthy and great and other people who were failures or average people were just spectators and they did not really know the secrets that controlled that level of excellence and then he got a young man like many of you know and may have heard called napoleon hill a young man in his 20s history would tell us and a young journalist and he gave him an assignment listen carefully the assignment was that i would give you letters of recommendation go and meet every one of these great and successful persons and i want you to interview all of them one by one piece together their philosophies and put it together in a concise format so that when we are long gone we will be able to leave our convictions for the generations that come and napoleon hill took on that journey and for a period of about six years there about he went around interviewing all the greatest and the brightest of the minds at that time and came together with 13 principles captured in a book that we know many of you may have heard about it called think and grow rich that was the product of that research vetting and interviewing all of these bright minds what philosophies did they honor to have produced such excelling lives hallelujah when i read that story many years ago it was so instructive listen to me you never reproduce a man's result until you are able to reproduce his philosophies his belief systems and his convictions never forget this no wonder the bible says let this mind be in you you want to become like jesus in experience you need to find out his convictions his philosophies his mindsets the first and about most important um, transference that needs to happen from one generation to the other is not physical things. The transference of convictions, the transference of mindsets, the transference of philosophies, the transference of beliefs. Believe me, the Bible says, for as he thinketh in his heart. Is that in your Bible? It says, so is he. That means if something is wrong in your life, I have taught you this, that your physical environment is only a reflection of the quality of your thinking and your philosophies. Unfortunately, those who desire to receive from great men are not interested in receiving their convictions. They don't focus on their minds to, to put together the quality of their thinking. Please look up. What do you believe about God? What do you believe about Satan? What do you believe about failure? What do you believe about success? What do you believe about excellence? What do you believe about wealth? What do you believe about poverty? What, be what do you believe about challenges? What do you believe about victory? These are the summation. These philosophies will frame your mindset and will inevitably translate to the results you have. You can have two men of God who love God sincerely, mentored under the same father or the same mentor, and you find out that their results become different. Impartation is there. Several other things are there, but one may be interested in learning more than just physical things. For one, he may be interested in holding the mic and making news. The other wants to study. This is very powerful. So the first gift, please hear me. Any father here, any parent, any leader, any businessman, any man of God, in thinking succession, the first gift that you can give your child and should give your child are a summation of your convictions. What made you great? What did you know? What did you believe? What have you come to hold through that has translated to an excelling life? That is the first gift that you give your child, not material things. 
unfortunately there are many children that pride themselves in cars and houses and designer clothes nothing wrong with that except that their lives are empty like the prodigal son because the prodigal son had physical things but no conviction are you seeing that now when the elder brother wanted to get sad the father said no don't feel bad there is something that gentleman did not ask for he asked for physical things but there are other things that i have one of them being my conviction i was not born like this so find out what i believed to be what I, let me tell you this every parent here i challenge you and every father and every leader make sure you do not go to your grave without capturing and preserving your philosophies and your beliefs in the most concise way give it to your child as a gift and you truly give him an inheritance hallelujah your convictions the first gift that must be transferred from one generation to the other now please look up do you know why there are so many people who are poor and mediocre i'm not talking about finances but just to borrow a concept when a poor man poor them meaning a description not an insult when a poor man sees a wealthy man the first thing he looks at is his pocket not his mind are we together you know a poor man not just by the absence of resources but his passion to see what is in the box poor people admire physical things the glitz and the glamour that come with great men but any mind that wants to rise is focused on the mentality what do you know and what do you understand let me challenge you therefore that in your quest to live an excelling life or to create succession to your results the first thing you should look out for are men and women whose minds are open and malleable to receive not people whose hands are free to receive people whose minds are ready to receive no wonder in many homes you see that those who truly receive the inheritance are some of the outcasts the boys that walk and do all of that because the children never learn the young boy is there watching the father while he's praying he may not be a biological son but he's there watching every step the day the father is not there all the children are at the mercy of the one who has the mindset not just the one who has the physical things hallelujah so the first thing you transfer if you are a good man leaving an inheritance to your children's children are your convictions be sure that your convictions have produced a correct result otherwise don't transfer something that will reproduce your own failure too the condition to transfer your convictions is that if those convictions have produced an excelling life unfortunately the same mindset that transfers excellence is the same mindset that transfers mediocrity also mediocres remain transgenerational mediocres by transferring a mindset that makes for mediocrity in fact i can tell you this by scripture and by reason of what i do most of what we call generational causes and most of what we call generational spiritual problems have been kept that way through generational mindsets that are passed along to so if a territory has generational poverty what happens is it is not only the spirit that is transferred the spirit will ensure that the mindset that makes it comfortable in administering poverty is also transferred that's why listen to my series on deliverance your real deliverance is not just exiting that spirit out of your life but there has to be a reorientation the Bible says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Unfortunately, age does not equal transformation. Longevity in this life may administer experience through pain, but it does not necessarily produce transformation. Hmm. Is someone learning? The next time your son comes to say, Daddy, I want my inheritance. Tell him, let me not see you near my garage. Or near my bank account go and get a clean sheet of paper and come and sit down let me transfer my inheritance and then start telling him the story that i was an orphan 
and as you are telling him that story ask him to write you are transferring an inheritance because at the end of that story the young boy will see and learn sadly the bible never told us how the prodigal son's father became great it just tells us that the man was great can i tell you every great man you admire seek to find out their philosophies what do they know what have they learned the moment you are receiving is start rejoicing because i assure you behind their convictions is the power that reproduces their results this man of god is having great results in ministry i can tell you it's not just impartation go and find out what are his covenants with god what are the things that informs his mindset why does he carry such a strange and a great presence of god what are the sacrifices that pack his ministry everybody say convictions yes sir i've had the honor and the privilege of meeting extremely successful people in my life fathers of faith business people veterans and every time i have the privilege of meeting and talking with them I'm not asking them how much are your shoes and shirt. That is, that is an unwise use of time. I go straight to ask them, please can you tell me your story? And then I'm looking for the punchlines in the story. When you change your mindset, when you made a decision, and I find keys there. In the name of Jesus, I speak over your life. The keys you must find the transference of beliefs that produce an excelling life may god help you to be sensitive to it yeah. hallelujah please sit down do you know that history and even statistics tells us that those who are closest to great people hardly become great themselves you know why because their focus is on the results usually it's those who do not have that privilege of access they are the ones who keep looking and between the lines they find keys let me charge you respectfully if god has granted you the privilege to live a blessed and excelling life financially intellectually in terms of your ranking and stature let me give you a kind advice respectfully speaking culture your children to understand that giving them physical things is not net inheritance it is the transference of beliefs is someone learning number two let's hurry up hmm. what is the second thing you must transfer to the next generation are you ready the second thing that qualifies to be called an inheritance is your name the second thing you should transfer to your children as a good man is your name write it down your name means your credibility your name means your track record your name means your impact your name means your value and your contribution the second thing that is worth transferring for succession to happen to be called a good man according to scripture is your name your credibility your track record your impact your value and contribution it can be transferable very very powerful genesis chapter 12 and verse 2 genesis 12 and verse 2 someone is learning it says and i will make of thee a great nation is that in your bible and i will bless thee and make thy name great let me tell you the difference between being great and having a great name when you are great you are great for yourself but when you have a great name other generations can use it as a leverage today we buy products we are not buying products we are buying names are we together when you go to a store and you say louis vuitton or angelo galasso or gucci you are calling the names of people they transferred that name at the end of your life your name will either be a key or a padlock there is no being neutral at the end of your life whether as a preacher as a leader as a businessman and as a parent your name to those who are before you 
will be a padlock or will be a key it will either lock the doors and the destinies of people multiplying hardship or it will open doors for them if you're with me please shout amen, amen. everybody say your name, your name. Mm. even jesus gave us his name he said use my name don't mind the devil don't forget about how he looks whenever you see him use my name he said in my name there are possibilities that happen it is not only the name of jesus that is powerful the name of a man is an investment of his track record his credibility there are names in this country if you call you will get a job immediately even if there is no space they will create it because that name is a track record of investment of many years hallelujah there are people who when favor is about to happen to you you keep praying that the name is not mentioned within that environment because the moment that name is mentioned there will be a reversal of that favor john which john the the tall one no please leave my office because with that name has come the memory of pain in 1975 that was the wicked man who caused trouble now the man has gone to be with the lord and yet people are still suffering because of his name can i tell you you are a failure truly if you cannot transfer your name i don't mean the spelling of it i mean the power that you would have accumulated in that name through many years so next time your son comes or your daughter or your subordinate and say give me my inheritance tell them i hope you are not talking of money sit down let me tell you the name you carry contains within it favor god has used that name to lift many take advantage of that name are we together the second thing that qualifies to be called an inheritance is your name please do not play with your credibility do not play with your track record these are all build-ups giving you a name that your children and your children's children will eat from there are people who may not have physical money but their children will never beg for food you know why because even though they were cleaners their track record their integrity gave them a name and tomorrow they will say who this name it looks familiar they'll say my father is that carpenter i don't care if he's the carpenter come and you sit here let me tell you the world that we live in now most people will be lifted by the name they carry more than just their intellectual investment i can tell you in a city like Abuja the first thing I learned when I moved into this city is that most of the things that happen to people is is not so much of course there is a place for meritocracy but I can tell you names can be a leverage there are people today who had to change different parts of their names for safety is that true because when they found out the stories behind that name they said this is too much battle i can't i can't spend my life fighting something i don't know anything about your name jesus said in my name take that name walk wonders with it when god makes your name great even when you are not there the name remains there and other people can come and use that name it's like a vehicle are we together the vehicle does not care who drives it just make sure it is driven and it will move please learn it your name is not just certain initials to identify you there are people today who have gotten jobs beyond their educational qualifications because of names may your name be a key in the name of jesus christ can i tell you there are people today who are suffering because their names brought them to trouble or the names that they inherited brought them to trouble every time you mention it there is trouble your credibility that means every day as you live your life you are adding pain to your children or adding favor did you hear what i said every day 
day as you live your life you are making investments to your name by the time you are 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or maybe when you are long gone the investment you have made in your name like a bank account there are bank accounts that have 10 naira using the naira currency 100 naira 1 million there are bank accounts that have billions then there are those who own the banks they all have names there are kings there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones but only a shua will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no my goal is that god will use by the privilege of his grace whether my name the name of this ministry that it will become a key both in the physical realm in the economic realm in the spiritual realm in the political realm there are master keys they can open any door why is it the key in revelation called the key of david that is the key that can open a door that no man can shut please hear me there are many of you the way you are living your life now you are not yet seeing the effect is when your children come or when they grow you will know that you have spent your life investing pain from the wickedness to the jealousy to the attitudes that you keep bringing you got a job and nobody can get that job again because of you you oppress people and you are acting i am alpha and omega respectfully speaking one day you will retire and then when you retire you will now find out that there are children coming there are lecturers who victimize students and destroy them today those their children cannot get jobs because they never gave people a chance for a great life do not pride in being a wicked person you are programming pain for your children the second inheritance that you must pay attention to is your name hmm. your name your name jesus protected his name protected his name and guarded his name because he was going to give us that name today that name has been exalted abraham i will make thy name great is someone learning already let me give you a kind counsel live your life knowing that others will be beneficiaries of your carelessness or of your attentiveness to the laws of life you have to know this and you have to believe it there are many of us right now except God intervenes the way we are living our lives our children are already in trouble we don't have to talk about demons you have already programmed it it would take God and favor working together to bail them out because based on our attitudes there is no possibility for a job no possibility for a great life it ought not to be so please hear me if you're a man of God here let me give you a kind counsel it would take more than preaching Greek and Hebrew words more than laying on of hands more than the ability to speak well to be able to last transgenerationally you must make sure that more than your preaching you are sincere to invest in men hide away and deal with your insecurities and trust people by the time you fight everybody and you are the alpha and the omega as the man of god the day you are weak or you are not there that vision dies is god helping us respectfully speaking there are people in ministry and there are people in business who have fought everybody anybody who is not you you fight them fight every church fight every man of god fight every other person and you stand proud you are programming disaster to yourself and everybody there the lord is helping us tonight a good man liveth an inheritance inheritance number two your name are you ready for number three inheritance number three that must be transferred 
in fact i didn't finish let me give you two more scriptures on that name proverbs 22 and verse 1 it says a good name proverbs 22 and verse 1 a good name is rather to be chosen look at the bible than great riches that if we keep riches here physical riches and we keep a good name he advises you to choose a good name because a good name can buy riches but riches cannot buy a good name ecclesiastes 7 and verse 1 ecclesiastes 7 and verse 1 again it says a good name is better than precious ointment man of god anointing is powerful but make sure with that anointing you have a good name a credibility and a track record of loving sincere people i was returning from um a trip you know coming back to prepare for the service and i was handed a newspaper and i was just going through it and i saw somebody wrote something that blessed me so much he said um, i hope i can remember he said there are many people who are powerful but very few people are loving i said wow this is so instructive many people are powerful do you know how many men of god have power but there is no love how many business people have resources and intellect but you come near them you want to run away they don't look like christ at all he says by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples not when you pray in tongues not when you raise the dead not when you teach properly much more than all of these things i am telling you the greatest uh, virtue that qualifies you is your love life Are we together? You will be surprised that there are many people as sound as they are spiritually, as intelligent as they are intellectually. They never find help and nobody wants to come around them. You know why? I have taught you and we teach it a lot in the school of ministry that people do not care what you know until they know that you care. They don't care what you know. It's none of their business. Carry your Greek and Hebrew. Carry your anointing. Take it places. They want to know that you genuinely love them if you keep power and keep love i will pick love a thousand times before i pick power because what defeated satan on the cross was not power it was love there abided these three faith that moves mountains hope that makes not a shame and love it says the greatest is love is someone learning now let's go to number three what is the third inheritance you must transfer to the generations after you your relationships and connections number three so number one your convictions number two your name a summation of your credibility your track record your value your contribution number three if you ever want to bless your children your subordinates or the people you are raising give them the leverage of your relationships and your connections hmm. john chapter 19 please john chapter 19 let's read from verse 26 god is speaking to someone tonight now watch this this is jesus hanging on the cross <laughs> And he sees, remember, all the disciples had gone away from him. But there was this one person, John, and his mother standing before him. Watch what happened. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, because he loved him, he said unto him, Mother, behold your son. And then 27, he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And your Bible says from that hour, that disciple took her home. That means this is the woman that made me mighty. I know you call me Jesus, but respect the woman who raised me until the Holy Ghost came. I transferred that relationship, John. No wonder he did not die a natural death. The same way it, it took, listen, Jesus had to lay his life down. And until his time was on, all other disciples and apostles were martyred except John the be loved not John the powerful find out what Mary did 
when Jesus handed over her to him don't you think Mary was an ordinary woman the angel spoke about her and said you are favored there were things she was carrying and he said John I want to give you a gift for standing by me on the cross I hand you over to this woman follow her she will do something to you do you know what it means to carry the Word of God in your womb for nine months you will never be normal never be normal hear me please relationships are a potent leverage you can hand over relationships and cut short somebody's 10 years of suffering the third inheritance God is changing someone's life your relationships to the point that when the Holy Ghost when Jesus was going to heaven he said don't worry there is a relationship I'm about to introduce to you don't worry I am living but do not cry there is one called Alos Paracletos the paraclete himself I am about to connect you to a relationship and when he that spirit of truth is come that he will guide you you will no longer be ordinary men all it takes is a relationship please listen you have heard me say it that who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters a king hates a woman and without fighting her she stopped becoming queen immediately then the king likes a village woman and immediately she became queen please look at me can i tell you this every great man is great among other factors because of the relationships that protect and defend him at that realm you have not transferred real wealth until you transfer your relationships now many non-christians understand this and they begin to program their children you've seen that happen they program their children to have strategic relationships political relationships economic relationships judicial relationships military relationships only believers we pray in tongues and yet we are bankrupt of intelligence please sit down the house of god is a place of wisdom next time your child says i'm ready for my inheritance tell him go to the house of the uncle that helped me and go and wash his car he says i'm too big says sit down you are not ready for a relationship you are not ready for any inheritance don't give him any car key for anything give him relationships every man is made by his relationships because all blessings come from god through men to men nothing comes directly comes from God if God says yes and a physical man says no that yes will remain in the realm of the spirit there is someone learning please look up I can tell you this my life today is a product of strategic relationships there are hard things that have become childishly easy because of the leverage of relationships the relationship with the Holy Spirit the relationship with strategic men please do not downplay the power of relationships look at me how many of you have strategic relationships within the judiciary if you are in trouble today nobody loves you enough to help you you will suffer both Satan and men will walk in partnership and rubbish your life because you have not seen the value many of you have fought and insulted politicians you have insulted everyone the day you now need help and you need the gates to be open for you there are times that you can be joseph but you will still be in prison it will take the king to send for you to come out of your dungeon hallelujah when you see businessmen and politicians i'm, I'm not marketing any of them but i'm just teaching you wisdom you've heard me say it when a businessman will leave america and come to nigeria to celebrate the birthday of a two-year-old billionaire son is the baby his mate can the baby talk to him what do you think he's doing to fly a private jet hundreds of thousands of dollars to come and greet a baby is more than a baby and then he comes with his own children 
he comes with his own children he says this one is called john whether this one wants to play with him or not he will force that relationship to happen because he knows believers let's learn let's learn let's learn please sit down the bible says which man intending to wage war against a city will first count whether he has what it takes to fight and if he discovers he does not have the next thing is the way of negotiation and relationship for peace to reign there are people today they do not have money but they can cough out billions out of relationships and it will answer in the multitude of men is a king's honor not just the multitude of things to the degree to which you can call on the help of men and they can respond to you with unbending loyalty that is the degree to which you are great value men and value relationships inheritance number three relationships and connections relationships and connections someone once asked me a question one day i told you he said how come you are close to a lot of you seem to have a lot of generals and military people and paramilitary what is between you and military people i said god knows the kind of call upon my life that's why he brought those relationships if you touch me both god and men whether you go to the realm of the spirit or from the physical realm there is a system that's for sure While I'm praying my own, oh. listen, let me encourage you here. Please look up. Let me ask you a simple question. I've asked you this, but I will ask it again. Can you mention one person in your life right now who you can actually call and say, I need help by 2 a.m. And he will wake up and say, I value you so much. Help is coming. If you don't have such a person in your life, believe me, you are sitting on a time bomb. There are men of God who love the Lord sincerely, but they lack strategic relationships. I'm not talking of parasitic relationships that every time people see you, they know that this taker has come. There are people in this nation, if their car gets burnt in the next one hour, another car is coming even if it's for temporal use they will never be left in shame there are people today if their house gets burnt they will have a place to spend the night can i tell you this among the many things you invest in please invest in men this is the world of men place value on men i was very honored and even flattered when i came in i thought i did something wrong i saw you people shouting and clapping on one hand sincerely i'm a very conservative person i can be shy and except when i'm on stage of course once i'm not on stage when i'm on stage that anointing is on me so I, I don't really care but outside of that i can you know but when i saw you clapping on one hand i felt of course i didn't it wasn't necessary but on another hand i was praying i said lord may somebody learn it who loves you enough to be there for you don't budge into a future you did not invest in and expect a stake in it no who's who did you help to rise when someone was crying were you there to wipe the tears if you were not there when i was in the cave of adulam don't expect an invitation when i'm celebrating listen one of the easiest ways to rise is to find something working and someone rising and be part of the history of growth hallelujah by the privilege of God's grace with the bit that I've been able to do for God in ministry and leadership I've had the honor of seeing some of my dear people within the ministry and by extension spiritually I've seen the mighty and the marvelous things that God continues to do with them in ministry in leadership in business and when I sit with them and they share this with me my heart is genuinely gladdened can I tell you, as tired as I am, there are people when they call, I will wake up. Don't ask me who. If you don't know, you are not it. <laughs> Can
can somebody see you as being valuable a valuable contributor to their life many of you have knocked on doors and ended up in shame because you use your days of glory thinking about yourself alone and never consider that this is the, a world that that is interdependent please change and teach your children there are children who are respectfully speaking lousy they don't respect anybody they just believe that things will work out they are not building their track record of relationships because they think they have money or they think they have some kind of thing they laugh at the houseboy laugh at the cleaner laugh at anybody and then the tables just turn sometimes overnight is God giving us wisdom turn to your neighbor and say I value you let me say it now hear me as I'm saying it I value you I value that relationship don't act tomorrow like you don't know me remember koinonia look up please praise the Lord praise the Lord now please look up look up do you know hear me do you know that relationships can create not only leverage they can create exemptions it is true there are people today who have owned land they did not pay for houses they did not pay for relationships paid for it who knows you and loves you by reason of your committal and genuine sincere connection and contribution to their lives there are people everybody who is close to you you have hurt and wounded and caused pain life is watching you tonight is a night of repentance change because you are programming woes over your children whilst you are seated there in one minute please lay your hands on your head and say lord grant me the wisdom the wisdom to maintain strategic relationships and then the wisdom to start connecting my children and my children's children to the strategic relationships that have worked for me please pray you are a young man here pray for the grace to build strategic relationships you are an elderly person pray father the grace to maintain the relationships that have helped my success and that my children will have the discipline and the humility to value relationships your connections your relationships hallelujah praise the name of the lord a true story one of these times i can't remember which which of the years now I was trying to process a visa for one of the nations and then when I was doing my biometrics and I just sat in front and a gentleman saw me and was happy he was rejoicing and he said apostle I can't believe it I said what can't you believe I came to get a visa what kind of embarrassment is this do the needful and let me leave this place and he said no let me tell you a story you had come to preach on our campus so 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 years ago and this and that and that and I'm walking in this place right now and he was laughing he got up and went and spoke something to a woman i don't know what they discussed but he returned back and i laughed i said lord you see how easy some things can be i've shared with you an old story here when we we're in zaria we we're told that story that some people were a gentleman was going to nda and then because of the height requirement he didn't match the height requirement, so they disqualified him. And being saddened, he went and because his father knew the then late Amir, he went to him and said, Sir, they disqualified my son. And then he did not even write. The then Amir, we were told, said he should go back and tell the commandant that the Amir has added his height. That's right. Who can add your height? in this wicked world that we live in please i hope as you are laughing you are taking seriously what i'm saying yes some of you as soon as you finish service even if someone is stretching his hands you can look at him from head to toe no you are not my class be careful 
be careful don't forget that as tattered as they are looking something came on them in that service treat people with honor treat people with dignity don't treat only wealthy and blessed people with dignity you are a hypocrite treat everybody with honor and dignity the apostle he cannot speak english no problem still treats them with honor relationships relationships number four inheritance number four that a good man leaves for his children's children are you ready physical assets now that's what most people call inheritance physical assets your cash your properties your businesses your estates your cash properties businesses estates in as much as i challenged it as being the ultimate thing you give it is also worthy of transference you can transfer physical things proverbs 19 4 let's walk quickly media proverbs chapter 19 and verse 4 he said did i get that right 19 4 oh dear wealth make many friends that's not what i'm looking for please help me my apologies numbers 27 let's look at 6 to 11. i must have missed a number or so numbers 27 let's start from verse 6 to 11 All right and the lord spake unto moses saying we're reading to 11 this and that all of these people thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren pay attention and thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them reading to 11 and thou shalt speak unto the children of israel saying if a man die and have no son then ye shall cause his inheritance to pass to his daughter this is the law of inheritance verse 9 and if he have no daughter then shall ye shall give his inheritance to his brethren verse 10 and if he have no brethren then ye shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren last verse and if his father have no brethren then he shall give his inheritance unto his kinsmen that is next to him of his family and he shall possess it and it shall be unto the children of Israel a statute of judgment as the Lord has commanded so there is a place for transferring physical estate and resources hallelujah I can tell you there are people whose lives have been accelerated because they had the privilege of receiving an inheritance it is not until an individual dies you can provide leverage of resources for instance i know people who haven't trained their children haven't helped them they gave these children the gift and the blessing of a house and say a car discipline them and give them do you know that if you give your child a house and a car under um for as long as you discipline that child and help the child to understand you have given that child a big leverage for an average person do you know for an average young man you know how many years it would take to build a house and to buy a car so when you give people physical things it is also a blessing to them joshua chapter 11 let's read from verse 15 if god is helping you shout amen, amen. joshua 11 and verse 15 please pay attention as i read as the lord commanded moses his servant so did moses command joshua and so did joshua he left nothing undone that the lord commanded moses so what did he do 16 joshua took all that land the hills and all the south country and all the land of Goshen and the valley and the plain the mountain of Israel and the valley of the same we're reading to 23 even from the Mount Halak that goes on to Seir even to all of those mountains to Lebanon Hamon and all their kings he took and smote them and slew them 18 
Joshua made war a long time with those kings. There was not a city that made peace with the children of Israel, save the Hivites, the inhabitants of Gibeon, all order they took in battle. 20. For it was of the Lord to harden their hearts that they should come against Israel in battle, that he might destroy them utterly, and that they might have no favor, but that it might destroy them as the Lord commanded Moses. Next verse. Watch this now. And at the time came Joshua and cut off the Anakims from the mountains, from Hebron, Debir, Anab, and all the mountains of Judah. And from all the mountains of Israel, it says Joshua destroyed them utterly with their cities. Next verse. There was none of the Anakims left in the land of the children of Israel, only in Gaza and in Gath and in Ashdod. There remain. Next verse, please. It says, so Joshua took the whole land according to all that the Lord said to Moses. Hear this. Joshua gave it for an inheritance unto Israel according to their divisions by their tribes. And the land rested from war. Please look at me. Let me challenge especially every man here as much as god grants you grace let me not put you under pressure but please make sure that when god gives you the gift of time be able to justify it by using the favor of god your value your relationships in putting something physical together that can provide a leverage to a responsible child hallelujah there are many young people in let me tell you why prosperity is not perpetuated especially in africa because when the an average young man starts in life he does not start from zero he starts from minus minus means he will pay the price of the parents carelessness then when he's 40 or 50 that's when he arrives at zero and then by the end of his life he now makes the same mistake demons and spirits will come and add to bring it to minus again then he will add he will give his child there are regions in this nation that have a leverage of perpetuating wealth or have a track record because they continue to build one upon another when you go to israel you go to europe you go to america you will find out that some of these people they have businesses and estates that are 200 years old 300 years old 150 years old the founders are long gone but they gave the estate don't think about yourself alone a good man so says scripture leaves an inheritance to his children's children if you can't give them a house give them land if you can't give them land at least let there be some money i submit to you that establishing yourself as a young man in our world today with the dignity of kingdom integrity will require the grace of god Go and ask builders how much is one block? How much is one bag of cement? How much is a plot of land in a city like Abuja here and in many cosmopolitan cities? An average young man, respectfully speaking, who is receiving say a hundred thousand, a hundred and fifty with the dignity of kingdom integrity without corruption without anything and minus any other leverage it would take god for that gentleman to be established do you agree with me by the time he's been established his children are already teenagers and that suffering will cut them short they may not be able to go to school at a good pace this is how people continue to lag again and again but in the name of jesus after this discussion may that grace that grace that will add favor to everything you are doing to accelerate your establishment may that grace rest upon you hear me you see the reason why when i'm praying for favor you should receive because by the natural course of things as far as our world today has presented itself you must play games and cut corners to be able to be established early physical assets it is not unscriptural 
even if it will require a parent denying themselves certain levels of comfort to provide that leverage may God bless I know that it is men's men's today is um, Father's Day and bless the men but may God bless both men and women who have paid the price to at least give their children something there are people who never had the privilege of going to school but mama will say i even if it means me frying something by the roadside to give my children that leverage may god bless you for that sacrifice there are elderly people respectfully speaking who are selfish they would rather the generations ahead of them perish provided they will have momentary comfort no Physical things can be a blessing. If God can help you and you can give your child a car or give your child a house or give your child some kind of physical assets to help and provide a leverage, provided the first things are done, convictions and the rest, that now becomes a blessing. If the prodigal son was wise enough to collect other things alongside the physical blessings, he would not have had to return back in shame. But he collected physical things alone. Hallelujah. Let me encourage you here. If there is any parent, father or mother in your life, whether spiritually, physically or by adoption, who has provided any kind and any form of physical leverage, make it a duty until the day you see Jesus to honor them in the secret and in the open there are many of you here by the privilege you know God has granted your parents and your loved ones to be financially disposed and they have provided all kinds of leverage for you please do not take it for granted hallelujah do not take it for granted there are people here casually your father just bought you a car and gave you your father just bought a three-bedroom flat and gave you and some of us with our attitude of ingratitude can turn and say what is i thought i will have another one whereas there's somebody who is praying and say lord even if i can start with one room i am still grateful perhaps at the end of this service some of you may need to extend text messages communicating gratitude to your loved ones to say i sat down in church today and just thinking about my life I want to say thank you for the money you gave me it stopped me from becoming a prostitute thank you for the car you gave me it stopped me from becoming a 419 er and a fraudster some of us may need to go back to our loved ones some of us may need to go back through history and say thank you to certain people who provided that physical leverage let's do a quick recap before I give you the final one has God helped you tonight inheritance number one your convictions inheritance number two your name inheritance number three your relationships inheritance number four your physical assets are you ready for number five inheritance number five your mantle and your anointing this for me is the master inheritance that you can transfer hmm. only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end there are names there are titles there are legends and tales of strength but only Yeshua will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. There are names, there are names, there are titles, there are titles, there are legends and tales of strength. Only Yeshua, only Yeshua. Will me 
beyond anything physical that makes a man there are spiritual qualities that men carry that distinguish them in life and destiny please i want you to pay attention every man that is made genuinely made there is a spirit factor that is responsible for all that you see manifest there is no man who is just made from the resources of this realm alone as vast and as diverse as they are if you last in relevance and you make any constructive impact in this life part of the resources that must have made you you must have been outsourced from a realm that is higher than this dimension behold i show you a mystery let me show you something that will surprise you genesis 25 <laughs> no matter what you give anybody you seek to succeed you you have not truly blessed them if you tr if you do not transfer the mantle the spirit the unction and teach them the secrets of maintaining it you don't only transfer mantles and anointings you must teach them your secret with god that kept it Please pay attention. We're about to pray now. Genesis 25. The entire text is from verse 1 to 11. But we may jump a few places for time's sake. Follow carefully. I'll begin my reading. Then again, Abraham took a wife. Remember, this was when Sarah passed on. The Bible says they brought him another woman called Keturah. Verse 2. And she bare him Zimran, Jokshan, Median. Median and all those names verse 3 in total Abraham had about eight children that we know six from Keturah and then one from Sarah and then one from Hagar are we together verse 4 now okay he's just talking about let's jump to verse 5 I'm saving time the Bible says, everybody please read it. One to read. Does this look like something you saw in the parable? Remember uh, in the, the story of... Um, and Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. Verse 6. Hmm. But to the sons of the concubines, which Abraham had, he gave what? Wow. Abraham gave all that he had to the one he knows is a son of covenant and promise. But to the rest, he called them and gave them gifts and sent away from Isaac, his son. The Bible says, while he yet lived eastward unto the east country. Read 7. And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life which he lived a hundred and three score and fifteen years jump to 11 please verse 11 and it came to pass after that the de after the death of Abraham that God blessed how many what of the rest how many sons did you read that he had and now the Bible says after Abraham died God bless his son Isaac what of the rest what did he give Isaac that he did not give the rest hmm. Genesis 26 from verse 12 please give us New King James Version if we can find that Genesis 26 and verse 12 there was something Abraham gave Isaac that the rest did not have the Bible says he gave them gifts, but to Isaac he gave all that he had. Everyone, please read with me. We're reading from verse 12, and then I will continue. Ready? One to read. Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in that same year. And the Lord, he did not sow that same year because he was the only one who sowed. Many people sowed just like him. But what was on his head 
was now controlling what was around his life verse 13 be patient and read one to read and the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very what was on his head brought him what he had now in 14 go to 14 what did he have of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants so the philistines he gave his sons gifts but he gave this boy a mantle he said this is all that made me me go with it you may go empty but you cannot remain empty with this on your head verse 15 we're reading to 16 i'm saying this because this night something is going to come upon your life in the name of jesus christ now the philistines had stopped all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of abraham his father and they had filled them with earth verse 16. it says abimelech said to isaac go away from us for you are much mightier that means there is something you can receive while you are receiving it your hand is still empty your bank account is still empty but destiny begins to rejoice and say you got something you got something more than money you got something more than relationships you got something more than a name i reserve this to be the last because there are few people who ever receive this hear me whether for men of god or business people or captains of industry this is the mystery behind the inability for sons to reproduce what is on their fathers they are looking for physical things but they never cease to carry that one factor ah, i sense an anointing already he gave isaac all that he had genesis 27 please genesis 27 we're about to pray please be sensitive genesis 27 we'll begin our reading from verse 1 we'll read 1 to 7 everybody please watch please let me have your attention don't be distracted if you are distracted with this story it's an attack just listen carefully and it came to pass that when isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see he called esau his eldest son and said unto him my son and he said behold here am i we're reading to seven he said behold now i am old i know not the day of my death next verse now therefore take i pray thee thy weapons thy quiver and thy bow and go out to the field and take me some venison next verse and make me savory meat such as i love and bring it unto me that i may eat that my soul may bless thee before i die verse 5 and rebecca heard when isaac spake to esau his son and esau went to the field to hunt for venison and bring and to bring it verse 6 and rebecca spake unto jacob her son saying behold i heard thy father speak to esau thy brother saying bring me venison and make me savory meat that i may eat and bless you before the that bless you before the lord before my death now jump for sake of time to verse 18. i want to show you a very deep mystery the highest form of inheritance that can be transferred and he came unto his father and said my father and he said here am i this is jacob now who art thou my son and jacob lied to his father i am esau thy firstborn i have done according as thou badest me arise i pray thee sit and eat of my venison that thy soul may bless me next verse and isaac said unto his son how is it that thou hast found it so quickly my son 
and he said because the lord thy god brought it to me he's lying you know, as advised by his mother and isaac said unto jacob come near i pray thee that i may feel thee my son whether thou be my very son esau or not reading to 29 22 and jacob went near unto isaac his father and he felt him and said the voice is jacob's voice but the hands are the hands of esau and he discerned him not because his hands were hairy and his brother esau's hands so he blessed him 24. look at he said art thou my very son esau and he said i am watch this now and he said bring it near to me and i will eat of my son's venison that my soul may bless thee and he brought it near to him and he did eat and he brought him wine and he did, and he drank 26 and his father said unto him come near now and kiss me my son 27 and he came near and kissed him and smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said see the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the lord had blessed 28 therefore god give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine next verse let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee he said be lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons oh 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 bow down to thee cursed be everyone that cursed thee and blessed be he that blessed thee verse 30 and it came to pass as soon as isaac had made the end of blessing jacob and Jacob was yet scarce gone out of the presence of Isaac his father that Esau his brother came from his hunting watch this and he also had made several meat and brought it unto his father and said unto his father let my father arise and eat of his son's venison that thy soul may bless me next verse and Isaac his father said unto him who art thou and he said i am thy son thy firstborn esau 33 and isaac trembled very exceedingly and said who where is he that had taken venison and brought it to me and i have eaten of all before thou camest and i have blessed him and yea he shall be blessed it's a law i've released it already now watch this 34 when Esau heard the words of his father the Bible says he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and he said unto his father bless me even me also my father verse 35 and he said thy brother came with subtlety and had taken away where is the blessing and how do you take it away because he did not carry any physical thing is it not just to speak couldn't he speak again ah there is more to the realm of the spirit than you see how can a gentleman just cry a matured adult crying and the father said sorry so it's not about repeating words there was something that had already come on jacob let's finish to 36 and he said is not he rightly named Jacob for he had supplanted me these two times number one he took away my birthright and behold now he had taken away my blessing and he said "Hast thou not reserved a blessing for me even one can I tell you this believe me when I tell you what is on your head is what controls what is around your life there are many people who are, whose hands are full but their heads are empty and easily what is in your hands can evaporate real inheritance is not the physical things you carry the conviction of the one before you the name 
that he gives you the relationships that he gives you the physical assets which is the least and then the greatest is the mantle and the grace that turned him you will hear the stories of people especially in the body of Christ you will hear a man of God tell you when God called me I could not even speak English and today he has a ministry around the world brothers and sisters it takes more than hard work there are spiritual forces that may have come to partner with such a person there are people who came to this Abuja they did not have up to 100 naira but their mama sent them from the village saying I don't have money but I once helped missionaries in 1971 and they said may my children be blessed my son go with this blessing and that gentleman will carry a box looking like an arm robber and as soon as he steps in Abuja the forces of the spirit start mobilizing themselves hear me this is why some people do not fear it is not what is on their hand it is what is on their head that yea I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I fear no evil hear me when I tell you I am a product of many anointings this is what I mean I have secured the blessing the sworn blessing of many people hold on do you see why they took Jesus to the temple immediately he was born they took him to the temple and met Anna the prophetess she spoke over him met Simeon the prophet spoke over him they said now Jesus you can go we, we guarantee you will succeed was our father in the Lord Bishop David Oyedepo who said he was somewhere in the US and the Lord cut short his meeting and said return back and make my people rich he didn't give them any physical money but he came back with an anointing that he can declare and say be blessed and you will hear that somebody did not apply for a job and yet they called him because thou anointest my head with oil but I see the results of my cup you don't anoint my cup you anoint my head but it's my cup that runs over listen believe me sometimes I wish I have the liberty to share testimonies but in many regards it will sound like arrogance I remember years ago a man of God prayed a prayer for me I met that man and I greeted him and I prayed an elderly man and he just said a prayer I I, I, I was it, it took a long time to say amen because he laid hands on me and he said apostle he said may God create a problem that only you can solve I said ah no why I'm somebody who is for the body I don't like all these kinds of things how can a man pray that kind of prayer you've heard my story that I was in just many years ago and I went to go and buy sugar cane listen true story and there were two old women who were trying to buy I think sugar cane it was not more than 100 naira I pleaded with them I said you are my parents I'm your child please give me the privilege of paying for you they said no I said let me pay and when I paid they began to bless me and one of the women blessed me in Hausa she said my son forever walk upon gold men are not just made by circumstances there are spiritual investments that men carry I've shared with you my stories of my encounters with the mantles upon God's generals I don't just come and make empty noise no now you understand what happened when Jesus appeared to me I've shared with you my story when he appeared to me he never gave me anything physical but he stretched his hands and light from the king of kings and lord of lords that light entered into me that surge of power and that surge of grace please help them and great take a look at those
I came here tonight to redefine inheritance for you. Inheritance is not cars and houses. No, that is the least. Inheritance is not just estates. You have not helped your son, let me tell you. If the only thing you give him is a car and a house, arm robbers can steal the car. They can demolish the house. But can you give something that cannot rust, cannot be destroyed? Hear me. He gave the remaining children gifts. But he gave Isaac everything he had. And yet there was no Isaac carrying a truckload, calling a truck. There are many young people who have been praying for their parents to die. Lord, let them die so I can get the two bedroom flat. Don't insult your destiny. What was upon your father that made him to never beg? That's what you should look for. Not three bedroom flats, not two bedroom flats. There are shamefully, I say it with all due respect. There are siblings and family members fighting for years and decades over mundane properties, not knowing that if you receive what made the men themselves, you can change the tides. There are people today who do not see eyeball to eyeball. This car is for me. This house is for me. That is the least of it. We're about to pray. I came tonight full of the spirit. I want to release something from my spirit. Believe me, help them. Honestly, I came from the depth of my spirit that something will be placed upon your head that will so turn your life around. We're wrapping up two keys for receiving from fathers let me give you two biblical keys you want to receive from a father a spiritual father a physical father a financial father a political father any kind of father there are two keys number one the first key that controls receiving from fathers is honor the first key you will never this is why our generation of young men do not succeed because we have institutionalized this honor we see it as a thing of pride young people who have not produced anything they've not raised anybody they've not changed any life but we can sit down and mark the scripts of fathers and dare to criticize every father deserves your honor even if you see their nakedness the Bible says Noah's sons they saw their nakedness and one called his brothers to come and laugh even though he was drunk when he got up he knew they were looking at him there are some things that are there and the other one moved backwards and covered him and he got up and cursed some of the sons two keys number one honor malachi chapter 1 we'll read 6 to 8 fire is going to fall here right now malachi chapter 1 from verse 6 to 8 it says a son honored his father and a servant his master if then i be a father where is mine honor and if i be a master where is my fear saith the lord god of hosts O priest that despise my name and ye say wherein have we despised your name we're reading to eight. Ye offer polluted bread upon my altar. And ye say, wherein have we polluted thee? In that ye say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. Verse eight. And if ye shall offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? Offer it now to your governor. Will it be pleased with thee? or accept thy person say the lord of hosts can i tell you this do you know why jacob isaac already had flocks 
but he said the one i want to eat is the one you go and get not the one at the back of the house why would he have flocks and herds and now tell his son carry your weapons of war i want the one that came from your effort place value on it let me eat let your honor for me turn to joy because that blessing from my spirit is only released through joy there are many children today who are carrying curses from their parents not demons because they've spent their lives causing pain to their parents sometimes we ship all kinds of things in the name of westernization and you see children insult their parents insult any kind of person and I, I, i'm saying this respectfully speaking young people whether in this country or across africa this is one of the mysteries behind the hard life of young people we have no honor at all for parents not just physical parents anybody can get up and just insult anybody no you will carry courses in successions We read it already genesis 27 when you read from verse 3 and 4 he said make me venison such that i love make me venison from your weapons of war honor is not just about giving money or giving seeds but let me tell you this as a person and as a principal you will never see me go and stand before any of our fathers of faith in this nation or any of any great mentor or father whether in business whether in whatever area i won't sit down and say i'm a great man apostle joshua selman i understand this law when i honor i honor from the depth of my heart there are many pastors today you can lie down and hold the legs of a man of god and never receive jack because it comes through honor you can even kneel down and still be standing up in your heart it's not about all of this pretense and this this hypocrisy people do genuine heartfelt honor is the reason why you see great people hardly reproduce themselves everything god gives a great man it is supposed to be for everyone who is interested but very few people do you know that there are many homes like i told you the biological children of the man and his wife don't seem to carry their grace and then you will see one stranger who maybe came to squat the person who communicates honor is the one who carries the mantle learn it from tonight let honor be a culture husbands honor your wives you don't honor your wife your prayer will not be answered the bible said that wives honor your husbands don't say he looked for me what does that mean children honor your parents Bring in all this westernization and you will punish your future in a way that you cannot imagine parents also respectfully speaking honor your children because there are things through their life that you may not have seen that god is revealing help this woman i'm seeing oil coming on her the first key for receiving from fathers fathers here does not just mean men alone those who have gone ahead is honor genuine honor how many pastors today talk about their leaders their overseers their, they gossip about them tear them down and then come up yes sir how are you sir that's the reason why no impartation works because the honor is not genuine how many business people how many people in corporations they sit down and tear their superiors insult them and talk all kinds of things and see them ah ceo sir god bless you he can cut cake for you and you can eat but that is it but there can be others who will say look i know this man is not perfect but i choose to honor him whatever granted him grace to come to abuja here and in five years he has become this i stand with understanding and i know and one day he can look at you and say i bless you or he will say let me tell you a story in 1971 my father died in 1972 my mother died 
1973, all my helpers died. So how did you become great? That is what is leading you to. And a two-hour conversation will become a six-hour conversation in that office. And at the end of it, you will say, I met one missionary who just said a prayer. And I want to pray that prayer for you. Sometimes you see our father in the Lord that is you. He will ask everybody to stand up. See, just because people don't tell you, anointings are like addresses. You can know where they came from. When you see extraordinary results happening for people, please let me tell you this. Look beyond the physical frame. There are people who is a combination of strange mantles and anointings upon their heads. Hallelujah. When Papa Idahosa was alive, according to God's servant, Bishop Oedeko, he would tell you that one time he came to him and delivered something and he gave him an opportunity to pick some money and he said, no, if I remember correctly. He said, no, no, no. What I want is that blessing. And he told him, kneel down. He said, from tonight, I impart upon you the grace of on time. That before any need arises, the answer comes. And he received it. When God grant me the grace and the privilege to lie down and pray alone in Daddy Joe's prayer room. I was not praying and saying, God bless me. Give me tea. Give me bread. I would be stupid to pray that kind of prayer. I laid down there and one of the things I prayed, I said, Lord, the covenant of answered prayer of many fathers who have gone that you have placed upon this man that he can speak casually and shift the climate of nations may that same grace come upon me I shared with you my story when we went to Equity State and I saw people dying at 130 something 140 something 150 something I said no there has to be a grace here when we were done preaching years ago I now came back and we stopped at a house where someone 136 he just died I said please look for the oldest man here so that we can receive this grace for long life there were hardly people there who could speak English eventually we got somebody who could speak limited English and they took us to one man old man and we said we are men of God we just want him to speak over our lives and he looked at me and smiled and said kneel down those who carry this thing know they have it all let me tell you those who carry it they know they have it you don't stand before people as colleagues and receive mantles no mantles don't honor don't don't respond to colleague mentality oh i used to know this one And as they prayed, I felt like a crown was being put upon my head. I now honored him, gave him a seed. And when we were going to go and enter the car, thanking the women who we asked initially, I just saw one of the women and they said that was the wife of this senior, um, the man of God, this veteran that had gone. They now, do you know that the woman was in her hundreds and yet she was standing strong, no stick, no nothing. I said what is this I said let's go back home if he's dead she's still alive in him two have become one the woman tapped me and said come she opened the room and started showing me the pictures that was the wife of his youth I hope you know those days they used to marry as teenagers that woman had stayed with him till his final days and then I said since this man is dead and he died serving the Lord they should tell her that please They've prayed for us, but I want prayer from her. The woman said I should kneel down and she removed both of her shoes. She stood on bare foot and prayed for more than 15 minutes in Yoruba. I don't know what she was saying. All I know is that there was a mantle. I returned with speed to Zaria and I said, my people, I came with an anointing. Stand up. Let me release something upon you first. Hear me. Your possibilities are defined by the mantles that are upon you.
one day a man of God prayed for me and he said son because of this apostolic grace upon your life I impart upon you I never knew there was such a grace he said I impart upon you the kingmaker anointing you've heard me say it kingmakers never become the kings themselves but they can enthrone and dethrone kings so you can stand and speak over an ordinary man and say may God lift you and that grace would defy anything and place that person there it's a grace number one honor number two service slash support the second key for receiving from fathers is there must be a track record of service or supporting what they represent genesis 30 when you read from verse 26 to 30 genesis 30 let's read very quickly we're about to pray give me my wives he said jacob now in the house of leban and my children for whom i have served thee and let me go for thou knowest my service which i have done unto you next verse and laban said unto him listen carefully pray thee i pray thee if i have found favor in thine eyes tarry ye for i have learned by experience that the lord had blessed me for thy sake isaac went to the house of laban and turned things around and he said appoint me my wages keep the scripture there and i will give it we're reading to 30 29 and he said unto him thou knowest how i have served thee and how thy cattle was with me 30 hmm. for it was little which thou hast before i came and it is now increased unto a multitude and the lord had blessed thee since my coming and now when shall i provide for my own household also listen when you carry mantles upon your head there are people who will give you jobs not because of any physical effort like laban they would have studied that anywhere this man sits down have you noticed that this man came into this business have you noticed that this man got a job into this parastatal and things began to change it is not always about physical work read your bible the spiritual climates that you carry can define possibilities in your life so you can hear people come and give you testimonies here they are not stage managing it we fear god how does someone just come and sit down and then by a week later his life just changes the same way your life too is about to change this night redefining inheritance now you know what an inheritance is forget about acquisition acquisition is tertiary the primary goal of lifting use it quickly oh fire let your mind be holy god's fire